Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning how to do the counting on and counting back strategy and also the bridging strategy and I'm going to show you when you would use them. All right, here's our first example. We have eight plus three. Now for here, I would use the counting on strategy because I'm only counting on a small number. I've only got three. So if I was going to do eight plus three with the counting on strategy, I could use my ruler. Here we go. I'm going to find my biggest number, eight. And it's just here. And I'm going to count on three more. One, two, three. So I know my answer would be 11. Now, if I didn't want to use my ruler or I didn't have a ruler at home, another way I could answer this with the counting on strategy is to use my fingers. So I know eight's my biggest number and I'm going to count on three more. So here's my fingers, here's my three. So I'm going to put eight in my head and count on nine, 10, 11. And that's my answer. I could also, <coughs> pardon me, I could also use this strategy for counting back. So I have my question, 11 take away three. Again, I'm going to count back only because this is a smaller number. So on my ruler, I'm going to find the number 11 and then I'm going to take away this time. So I'm going to go backwards on my ruler, take away three. One, two, three. So I know my answer is going to be eight. Again, I could do this on my fingers. So I start with 11 and I'm gonna put up three fingers and I'm gonna count back. So I put 11 in my head, I'm gonna count back 10, nine, eight. So that's my counting on and my counting back strategy. I could also use a bridging strategy. This might be new to some of you. Now I would use this strategy when one of the numbers is close to 10. So if I have nine plus five, this would be a really good time to use the bridging strategy because I know nine is very close to 10 and I'm adding a bit bigger number this time, five. So. I know my friends of 10, I know nine plus one equals 10. So I'm going to take one from this five to give to the nine to make that 10. Now, if I take one from the five, I know I have four left over because one and four equals five. So 10 plus my four that's left over is going to equal, I know 10 plus four straight away, that equals 14. So that's my bridging strategy. Now, I could also use this bridging strategy when I want to do a takeaway or a subtraction problem. 22 take away seven. I would choose to use the bridging strategy for this one because seven, again, that's quite a big number to take away. So a bridging strategy is more efficient. So again, with our bridging strategy, we want to make our number a at close to a 10. So I'm going to make this one 20. So I need to take away this two to make it 20. So I'm going to break my seven into two and five, because that two then gets rid of that one. And I have 20 take away what's left, five. And I know 20 take away five equals 15. So when we're doing our addition and subtraction problems, we really need to think, what is the most efficient strategy to use? If we are only adding or taking away a small number, the counting on or counting back strategy would be more efficient. But we could also use the bridging strategy if we're using bigger numbers and we have them close to a 10. Now, I have two problems for you, 18 plus nine and 13 take away two. I would like you to have a go at answering these problems and tell me how you worked it out. Did you use a bridging strategy or did you use the counting on or counting back strategy? Once you've done this, you might like to take a photo and upload it to your maths team.